Consider the following story. It's a tad bit dated, and depending upon how old you are, its relevancy may not have the most potent impact. But say you're walking down the street, minding your own business, and a car pulls up and asks you for directions. Maybe they're looking for a movie theater or a gas station or a subway or a McDonald's. And you, being the good Samaritan that you are, you give your best crack at giving sound and correct and thorough instructions to help those pe people get to where they gotta be. Now, like I said, this story is kind of old with the advent of GPS. People very seldom ever ask other people for directions. Uh, they really don't have to bank on a local person knowing the lay of the land and knowing the ins and outs of their particular area where they live in. But even though GPS is readily available to aircraft and it has been for quite some time sometimes every now and then more often than we would care to admit we have to give grandiose long-term far out directions to controllers other controllers an aircraft put them on routes right the roadways of the skies the jet airways victor airways rnav routes y's l's t's all kind of procedures, we have to direct them and get them to the right spot. We take what little information we are able to gather via manually over the phone or automated means, and we make a sound decision and clear and route the aircraft to where they gotta be. And that is what today's video is all about. It's the preferred preferential route game part one. One video is not enough to go over all the things here at CM1 that you will have to have uh, available or have to know as you make your way through the process of clearing and routing aircraft. If you're a fan of Trivial Pursuit or Jeopardy when you were a kid, this is right up your alley. This is mindless memorization and knowing when to apply it and regurgitating it when needed, oftentimes with very little notice. So this should be up your alley and it's very exciting. So if you didn't watch Jeopardy or not in the trivia, by the end of the video, I hope it entices you to explore that notion and to broaden your horizons. Steve here could not be happier that you guys are hanging out with me, talking a little shop. We are going to go over the choice way, choice, exactly, fancy fingers there, uh, to get planes to where they gotta go correctly here in San Juan. Today, we're focusing on the local option. We'll explore outside of San Juan Center's airspace in another video. Couldn't be more excited? Let's get to it. I'll see you at the next slide. There's no need for the intermediate bulleted list. We are jumping in feet first, all hands on deck here at a D2 and D8 sector on the D side. Nightmare at D2 and D8. Oh God, that's rather ominous, wouldn't you say so? But being positive as we like to be here when we talk to each other about this kind of stuff, we are gonna look at this from an optimist point of view and say, hey, let's turn this nightmare into an REM filled sleep full with wonderful dreams of success and certifications and checkout parties and the like. Let's take an inventory of what we got going on here. We have our UTC time clock here, 2043, 17 seconds frozen in time. We have two tickets in the Alaska Anner Bay, so we're not incredibly busy here, you know, barring anything in the St. Croix Bay, which we didn't quite have room for. The ETBS is pulled up and we have an empty D2 suspense bay header. So everything seems okay until, well, if you look at the SBZM ring line, it is activated. And if we were able to simulate the sound here, that bung bung would be going off as Mike Atia in Venezuela is trying to call us. So with that being said, here we are. San Juan Center, Mike Atia estimate, Yankee Victor 3088 or more. And this is how the call takes place. It's a ring line, it's on a shout line. So we don't have time to go through that proper chapter two telephony exchange, they usually just start rambling right off and let's play catch up. Okay, Mike Atia, Yankee Victor 3088, I did hear that much, stand by. Didn't even have time to really say San Juan Center, but well, they know who it is. And I go and look at the D2 suspense bay and well, old mother Hubbard, there is nothing in our cupboard. And I am beginning to think that we may not have this flight plan. Sure enough, maybe the flight plan somewhere else. I will full route it. Nothing exists when you full route it in the FBIO. And we just exhausted every option that we kind of have to immediately locate and facilitate that flight plan to the sector. Negative flight plan. 
empty bay. My goodness. Well, the first thing we're not going to do is we're not going to panic because everything is okay. Everything is still rather copacetic. The notion is that the aircraft might be getting close to the boundary. So there's no need to panic, but we cannot be lax about it either because chances are that aircraft is not being coordinated in suspense. That aircraft is not on the ground in Caracas or Micatia or if it's an overflight, it sure as heck isn't on the ground, depending on where that aircraft came from. So we know that time is of the essence. This is an active flight plan. It's fluid. That aircraft is in straight and level flight, and they are making their way to our boundary. So let's talk about what our options are. Not panicking. We're going to deal with this logically, and you'll see you'll be able to navigate this regularly occurring situation, no problem, after the subsequent slides. I'll see you at the next slide. Let's do it. Here or there, that's the title of the bulleted list right now. And it does have a sense of relevancy because as I said in the title slide, we are going to take a look at this regularly occurring occasion from two points of view. One, localized San Juan centric kind of things. Uh, US Virgin Islands, St. Martin, maybe Santa Domingo, and obviously the island of Puerto Rico, any facilities, airports, airfields there, we can take care of this locally. And that's what we're going to address today. It's the easier of the two options. Now, if it's taking place outside or not here, but rather there when we're talking outside of the San Juan flight information region, well, we're going to see about that in another video. But don't panic. You got this. That's always worth saying again. There are many tools at our disposal. Some offer self-reliance, which we're going to talk about. Others have an assisting third party or resource. There's always resources available. Now, to go off on a bit of a tangent, we'll keep it short, but San Juan Center, we are kind of limited in those resources. We do not have EDST or ERAM to present us with a drop-down menu uh, of routes to select from, uh, flight plan, um, searching, acquiring flight plans from the flight data processor that they have up in the facility in Miami-Dade County. We are kind of tied at the hip and we have certain limitations. So that's where I said the computer between your ears is going to help you get through this. That whole trivial pursuit jeopardy thing, it's going to pay off in the long run. So start recording the essentials. That is one of the first things we need to understand. We know Yankee Victor 3088. We got the call sign. We know they're estimating our more or wanting to uh, traverse the boundary via our more. So that's uh, two pieces of valuable information. Now, we need to get other information, fill the gaps, and start putting together, no matter how simple, a semblance of a flight plan. We have various fields that we have talked about that we know that we need to get, and we will be able to enter in those fields and come up with a generated flight plan that will serve the purpose of recording that the flight existed in our airspace, showing route of flight, coordinating with all downline facilities, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, let's start getting some essential information. Ready, set, jets, go. I will see you at the sector again. Coming off that pause that we took, that suspension of disbelief, we're able to freeze this scenario. We're still on the phone with Mike Atia. Everything is still the same here as we left it, but we need to continue, excuse me, continue that conversation. But as we know, since we could not find the flight plan anywhere in the system, nor could we find it in our suspense bay, our immediate action should be is to reach across whether we need to actually request one or find a blank one there in a holder and get a blank strip. Boom, put it there. We need to fulfill our obligation of getting the information that we talked about in the last slide. Let's start getting the very central information because that is a legally binding document, whether it's handwritten or eventually uh, entered into the computer and you have its computer generated equivalent, but that starts the process there. That form, what we call flight progress strip, is a wonderful legal document to help distribute and facilitate flight uh, information about airplanes. So our dialogue is going to continue saying Yankee Victor 3088, safe point of departure and destination. Now, why is this the first thing we want to know? As you know, we have covered flight plans rather exhaustively in this series, and you have call sign, aircraft type, 
the beacon code, the speed, the fix, uh, the time, the altitude, and the route of flight. Now you see, we are jumping ahead. We are going to somewhere here in field 10, and we only have so much information. We just know Yankee Victor 3088, and we assume that the aircraft is coming over or more, which in fact they are, but we're skipping ahead. But why is that important? Well, the reason why that's important is because we can figure out how hard our job is going to be. And as you see here, what I mean by that is they come back, my Katia controller comes back and says Yankee Victor 3088, departed Caracas, landing San Juan. If they say Caracas and San Juan, that's up to you to try to know your airport identifiers, SBCS, that's always good to know. And it's great to always have that information readily available, not have to ask the uh, encoding of those identifiers. But look, that is exactly what I kind of alluded to. Our job is not very hard at all. As I said in previous slides, that we are able to take care of things inside of our flight information region, or at least immediately near it. As I said, St. Martin, the U.S. Virgin Islands, that includes St. Thomas, Beef Island, uh, St. Croix. Anything on the island of Puerto Rico we can take care of, and anything in Santo Domingo we can take care of because we share a common boundary and LOAs and SOPs dictate the way we do business with them. And oftentimes that business includes preferential routings for arrivals, departures, and overflights. So hot dog, we got it made. So we should take, uh, obviously, note of that, right, SVCS truncation because we don't care what took place between Caracas and Armour. We're worried about what's going to take place between Armour and San Juan. And boom, we are going to wipe our brow, that sweat that has accumulated there. And this is perfecto. This is one of those light bulb moments. Use your airspace knowledge to solve the trivial pursuit, huh? You see what we did there? Of a flight plan. So absolutely wonderful. We can figure this out. Maybe you're an A-side watching this video and you don't know the airspace and route and airway structure of San Juan Center's airspace too well yet. That's okay. That's why we're here. We're going to learn this. Or if you're a D-side, just brush off some of that dust and take a look at our in route charts and we will figure this out. So wonderful job. Let's get to it. I'll see you at the next slide. And we're going to go exploring. Before we make our jump into the world of charts and SOPs, Let's take a look at the here or there situation again. We are covering today in this very video that first method we talked about, self-reliance on institutional knowledge. That's a very fancy term. Use it with pride, saying this is what I learned and this is how I'm going to apply it. It is kind of trivial because it is blind repetition, writing things down, going over them on flashcards. But when you take that knowledge that you acquire, that you stuffed inside your brain, and you're able to regurgitate it and apply it to a situation where you really need it. And that's where it comes full circle. And that's where you kind of celebrate the fact that you recalled and retained all that wonderful institutional knowledge. So you know your airspace. But if you don't, and it, this is a review for you, or you're not quite at the D side level, the radar associate level here at the facility, we are going to work from the inside out. We are going to start with the simplest form of airspace, our relationship as a center controller to San Juan Approach, we are going to work with their map and work our way out so we can find our way properly, the proper way to get to San Juan from our moor. And you'll see we'll be able to cover just about every boundary fix and associate it with uh, proper SOP routing as stated in facility directives. I'm excited. Let's keep the good vibes going. See you at the next slide. Well, here we are at the video map. So we're not quite at the charts, we're here at a video map, but it's a good place to start because on most commercial charts, whether you use Sky Vector or you actually have a JEP chart, or even if you use the controller charts that you find at the facility, you will not find the video map laid out in such a way where you can start working from the inside out. And just remember to know thy airspace, thine airspace, is to know thyself. Very profound, almost Shakespearean words of wisdom there. So let's start right there. A little Q&A. What arrival gate is this? And the answer, the sailor gate. Okay, sailor, we got it. Next one. 
what arrival gates are these? I know I'm kind of blocking it, but the arrows referring to these two particular areas, and we have the Vetus and Shaka gates, okay? Two more fixes that are worth knowing, very important. What arrival gate is this? Well, it's the Joshi gate, okay? Joshi, there we go. We have Sailor, Vetus Chaka, Joshi. Oh, look at that. What gate is that? It's the Boca or Dorado gate, okay? So these are all the gates that we will have aircraft go through that are landing the San Juan terminal area. And last, but certainly not least, making our way clockwise, is the Bino Gate. So why is this important? Well, we're working from the inside out. We can't get much closer to the San Juan terminal area than what we're looking at now. This rather weird looking polygon is centered around the airport, more or less. I believe it's centered around Isla Grande Airport because before San Juan Airport was built that we know it, that was, Isla Grande was the San Juan Airport, but we we're working our way out. So guess what we just accomplished? We were able to accomplish how we can at least get to these airports using these gates or these arrival transition areas as some, they're sometimes called. So good, so let's move out just a little bit further and see what our SOP and what our actual charts, that not video maps, but actual charts, how can we get to these fixes? And what do these fixes actually mean in the grand scheme of things of um, accomplishing the task at hand? So let's take a look. I'll see you there. Awesome. So our title just changed. Get them through the gates. Okay, so let's take an inventory of what we've done so far. We've recognized that we need to put a flight plan in for the Yankee Victor 3088. We took a look at the video map working inside out, right? Working out of the San Juan terminal area and making our way out, we identified the arrival gates, those arrival transition areas. Now, let's take a look at what documentation, what facility directives actually have to say. Get them through the gates. Okay, so as per the San Juan Center SOP, we must assign aircraft a route that takes them through the arrival gate as depicted. And you will see that the chart and the narrative to the right of our bulleted list is taken exactly from the San Juan CRAP SOP. This is our mission. We must oblige and accept it. What is our mission? The in route sectors, two, four, six, and eight, those are the in route sectors at San Juan Center. Controllers must ensure that all inbound aircraft are established on the preferential routes prior to the respective inbound gates and issued the following crossing restrictions. All others must be verbally coordinated. Okay, so verbal coordination always trumps any kind of written procedure. We can do anything with coordination, and oftentimes we do. Weather, emergency, special circumstances, you name it, we're able to coordinate it. But let's go by the book today, barring any of those uh, terrible things taking place. All, at all costs, learn how to clear or route aircraft to these areas. That is our mission. We identified it. We see here we have certain gates, and it should come to you as no surprise that we talked about Joshi and others, Sailor, Vino, Vetus, Dorado, and West Ops, which we will not cover today. That will be a separate video in and of itself. But those are the gates. We identified the gates, and now the gates actually have some meaning other than just an arbitrary area on the video map. They have roots associated with them. They have fixes associated with them. They even have altitudes associated. And even though I'm covering up some of them, the altitudes and both the speeds, it's not that important. The idea is we found these gates and these gates have meaning. It resonates with the idea that we need to route Yankee Victor 3088 over one of these gates because these gates are the way we facilitate traffic from the center to the approach control environment. It's agreed upon. It's in our SOP. It's what controllers are expecting to happen on both sides of the equation, both the approach controller and the in route controller. Everybody's in the know. It's what is expected. It's what's known. It's what's agreed upon. It is just what is mandated. And that's how you keep order out of all those planes in the sky. That is uh, a very metaphorical way of kind of thinking how all this works is because we all agree that that is what is going to happen and where it's going to take place. So let's keep working from the inside out, knowing that these gates have meaning and that they mean something in the course of what we're trying to accomplish here, doing things by the book, we can work on another level of abstraction and take another way out and let's find some airways that hook us up to these gates. 
All right, I'll see you at the next slide. Starting off in no particular order with the Boca or Dorado gate, as it's called, or sometimes the route to eastbound gate. Now, if you are a pilot watching this, up until now, mostly everything we've talked about in this presentation has been targeted to the developmental controller or an air traffic controller. But now this is kind of shifted to where this information might be valuable to you if you plan on flying to the San Juan terminal area and are looking for the proper routing for your arrival stage of flight. So if you're here, welcome, and I hope you get something out of it. Get them through the gates, and that's what we are going to do by God. So our first element here, or our first root string here, is KTOC. Amber 636 to Barinkin, route two to San Juan. And it's just implied after the last element in that root string that it's either San Juan or Isla Grande Airport because we are talking about the San Juan terminal area here. So there you go. That's how you get to San Juan from that. Also, bear in mind, there's one other we should talk about, the Maya, green 633, to Dorado, and then direct San Juan. This particular route of flight, or these two particular route strings, are for props only. Now, sometimes ATC will assign, we will assign a jet this arrival gate due to weather or operational advantage, but we have to coordinate it. So if you request it, it's not that big a deal. We have to verbally coordinate it. So just remember, if you're working in the position and the R side, or if you yourself are the R side and you clear this air, clear aircraft through the Dorado gate, just know you have to app rack it or approval request it with the receiving controller. But first gate done, so far so good. Let's keep it going through the rest of them. See you there. Making our way clockwise, we are now in the north side of San Juan Center's airspace, slightly northwest, moving clockwise to the northeast. A few things to consider. You should understand that these routes will either be given to you by a Miami or New York air traffic controller through either radio or automated means, which means for our particular situation here that we have on pause with the Mike Atia controller will not happen. Seldom, if not if ever or never will you ever have to manually copy a flight plan from a Miami or New York Center controller and have to solicit aircraft type, call sign, point of departure, destination, route of flight. Our automation has proven itself to be very reliant and very resilient and will always give you the information you need. Now that is not to say that you won't have to correct anything. Uh, sometimes aircraft will forget to file an arrival gate, which and hence why we are going over this particular area. And sometimes automation doesn't catch it. And sometimes it's up to you to assign it. So it's good. You won't necessarily do that as a D side because you're not talking to the aircraft yet. But one day you will be an R side. Or if you catch it, you can tell the R side that they need a particular arrival fix or they need a particular route leaving Sam Juan's airspace. So this is good practice for everybody. So moving from left to right in a clockwise fashion. Let's start with Fivebeck Yankee 355 Pling Route 7, in which Route 7, as you know, goes to San Juan. So there's the airway there. We hit Pling and we start a nice southeast turn over Sailor to San Juan, which is not depicted. Kinch, Lima 455, Lent, Mike 423 to Pling Route 7, San Juan. Wonderful. Hansi, Lima 456 to thank, direct plane, no need for an airway, Route 7, San Juan. Cheddar, Lima 458, thank, direct plane, Route 7, onwards to San Juan. Sorry about the scribble there. Kika, Mike 597 to thank, direct plane, Route 7, San Juan. Wonderful. That also takes care of Lima 459 inbounds as well. And last, but certainly not east, our <laughs> east, you see what we did there, Soco, Mike 525, Panmo, Sailor Route 7. So sometimes you will get an aircraft probably departed from somewhere far away in Europe, 
and they are pretty far northeast, and you can easily give a Mike 525 to Panmo, and they make a little turn to Thaler, and all of a sudden they're on Route 7, and they are through the Sailor Gate, where they will get the crossing restriction, the speed restriction, setting them up for the approach controller for that wonderful handoff. So there, you have the north side of San Juan Center's gates taken care of. These are the ideal ways to enter the San Juan Center airspace. Now, if you enter on a random route, sometimes you do from New York, or something is APRAC with Miami, just as long as you're over Sailor, that'll do the trick. So just keep that in mind, and keep that in mind as a D side, that sometimes you may not be able to come up right on the spot with what the route should be over Opal to get to Sailor. You'd be taking the aircraft to the zigzag way of of routes and stuff so Opal's the only one depicted here we do have day when which is down here and they found day when trying to get to san juan well you're gonna have to figure that out but the best thing is that you acknowledge that the gate exists and that they have to be over a gate because that is what the sop said let's keep up the good vibes let's keep going moving our way through the airspace not quite clockwise we're moving counterclockwise we are now in the northwest section and this one is incredibly simple here the miami boundary we already took care of one route the yankee 355 route over five pack that takes care of one particular sector that interfaces san juan centers miami center 63 or grand turk they interface with us over five pack for san juan arrivals which you can actually see the remnants of it depicted here 355 playing and there's route seven now we're talking about Sector 62, or the Grand Turk Sector. And I'm sorry if I misspoke. Sector 63 is the Serta Sector. Now we're talking the Grand Turk Sector here at 62 over Calto. Calto, Yankee 290. Here, let's get it listed up there for you. Calto, Yankee 290, Bino, Route 6 to San Juan. And there's the Bino Gate, wonderfully placed. Very simple, props. Turboprops, jets, all kind of types. This is absolutely wonderful. And it is probably the second most used gate here at San Juan because a lot of our traffic does disembark from the East Coast or slightly west of the East Coast, looking at you, Florida and Georgia, and uh, North Carolina too. And the idea is sometimes if they're shifting weather patterns, they come a little farther southwest under San Juan and they are over the Bino Gate. So there it is. So let's keep moving onward and upward. Now we are slowly getting closer to the situation we have on pause, the situation we have on hand. We are looking at the southeast portion of San Juan Center's airspace, totally interfaced with foreign facilities. And with foreign facilities, come that frustration of missing flight plan and missing flight plan information and valuable data. So here is where you really wanna have this in your toolbox, in your holster, ready to use on an on-demand basis. So let us start. You see Vetus is the gate that we are attaining to get through. Ah, starting with the Southwest portion, Kiker, Vetus, cause there is truly no good airway that goes through Vetus. You might be tempted to give Lima 456, but it doesn't go over Vetus, but it kind of mirrors it. So you can see how you are still keeping up with a familiar traffic flow, which is very useful uh, in this kind of situation. Moving further to the east, Anata, this Anata, Vetus, San Juan, 154 radial San Juan. And if I omitted that in the last example, I apologize. As you saw by that chart, technically we often give Vetus Direct San Juan, and that is perfectly okay. Uh, Vetus Direct San Juan mirrors the San Juan 154 radial. That San Juan 154 radial is a throwback to when there was a lot of active military airspace in the San Juan flight information region, and aircraft had to be established on that radial to avoid penetrating those military operations area or those MOAs. So just keep that in mind. The book still says the San Juan 154 radial and Vetus Direct San Juan is the San Juan 154 radial. If you were to measure Vetus, it is exactly off the San Juan 154 radial. You can check AirNav to see if the San Juan 154 radial actually makes up Vetus, uh, coupled with another 
radial from another navate and that forms it. I cannot remember exactly, but you'll sometimes get Vetus direct SAM1, but just know properly the aircraft should be joining the SAM1154 radial. With that being said, and semantics are taken care of, let's move on. Geese, Vetus, SAM1154 radial. So you get again, we are looking at an air uh, an airway emitting from Geese, Lima. Uh, 776, it does not necessarily go through Vetus or St. Croix or join up anywhere with Route 4, but uh, direct will work just the same. And I'm sorry, I was pointing at St. Croix, but there that is. So yet again, now with those random routes being taken care of, Hillary, Amber 555, St. Croix, Route 4, Vetus, the San Juan 154 radial, uh, San Juan VOR, Amber 555, St. Croix, and then you see how Route 4 goes to Vetus and they pick up the radial and go there. Yet again, sticking with the pattern, Modix, Red, Triple Eight, St. Croix, Route 4, Vetus, San Juan 154 radial, San Juan. Next one, Gabar, Green 633, yet again, this one being very useful. Uh, very valuable as well. St. Croix, Route 4 Vetus, San Juan 154 Radio, San Juan. And Gouda, this one's very useful for your Julian departures that are not uh, going to stay at 10,000 feet or below or flight level 100. They're going above 10,000. Gouda, Red 760, San Croix, Route 4 Vetus, San Juan 154 Radio, San Juan. How absolutely wonderful is that? And last but certainly not least, taking care of a very far east option on the northeast side of our airspace, originally coming to uh, sector two from sector four, because from my walk, sailor really doesn't work out. It's going to ride the boundary uh, between sector two and sector four. Natural progression to join traffic flows, the way our airspace is set up with aircraft uh, departing the downward windward and leeward islands making their way north westbound to keep up with that flow and to join that flow kind of we use this preferential routing for guys really far to the east my lock mike 576 my lock not being depicted there but they do it so you know my locks is a little northeast of that position juliana or st martin bor and they join red 760 st croix route 4 vetus the san juan 154 radio the san juan and as you see here, the Vetus gate facilitates a lot of potential traffic, serves lots of fixes spread out between uh, three sectors, if you will, sector eight, sector two, where it is its hallmark, and then even an uh, airway for sector four to facilitate traffic over the Vetus gate. Very important gate, and as I said at the beginning of this slide, Oftentimes, you will have a failed interface where you did not receive flight plan information, and this is the route of flight that you will be putting into the system, routing and clearing, whether it's talking to the pilot directly, if you put it in and have the R side relayed, or you are relaying it to one of our foreign counterparts. You will be doing a lot of this, so just be prepared. Great job so far. We're almost there. Let's keep up the good vibes. We really are moving all over the place here. Now we're in the south, uh, southwest corner of San Juan Center's airspace. No worries, last but certainly not least. Let's start with the Joshi Gate, and our first route string is Antex. Now, you will very seldom get aircraft landing the San Juan Terminal over Antex. There are a lot of other viable options, but this one was included just for sake of example. Now remember, as we talked about the Boca Dorado Route 2 eastbound gate, we talked about how that was for props only. And just a reminder, that is for props only and jets by approval request. Now, to facilitate both turboprop and jet traffic to the San Juan area, from the southwest side of the island of Puerto Rico, we have the Joshi Gate. So there we go. Just gave you the example of Blue 892, Mayaguez VOR DME, Route 12, Joshi, and from Joshi, they joined Route 12 to the San Juan Vortec. How wonderful. Maya, Green 633, Mayaguez VOR DME, Route 12, Joshi, you know, Route 12 all the way to San Juan, if you will. That one you will use lots and lots of times because of our operational relationship with Santo Domingo. A very much, well, relatively speaking, newer route. Sato, Lima 221 to Joshi, Route 12, San Juan. Absolutely wonderful. Scapa, 
Lima 325. This one's a good one too. Lima 325, all the way to Joshi to join Route 12 to, you guessed, it, Sam One Board Deck. Armour, November 779 to Joshi, Route 12. San Juan, hold up, that sounds like this has come full circle. This is what we need to know. Yes, this is Yankee Victor 3088. This is it, guys. This is the route we need to assign. Either we relay it to the Venezuelan controller on the other line, say, hey, Mike Atia, I'm going to take down all this flight plan information, and I am going to give you a route that I need this aircraft to be on. And boom, we found it, our last example. So it was worth watching the whole way. So yes, this is exciting. So guess what we can do now? We can stop looking at these charts, stop with the red lines, and we can get back to the sector and complete the task at hand. Boy, that was a breath of fresh air, and I'm very excited. So let's get back to the sector, and let's get this job done. I will see you there. Welcome back to the sector. What better way to welcome ourselves back than to hit that unpause button, unfreeze button, and let's pick up that conversation where exactly we left off. We copied down the bare essentials from the Venezuelan controller. We know the call sign, the point of departure, destination, and the fix. So now, with everything that we have exhaustively gone over in these previous slides, we can complete a thorough and correct and sound flight plan that will enter the San Juan FIR and terminate at the San Juan airport, everything by the book. What a wonderful concept. Picking up with the conversation, Yankee Victor 3088, no flight plan ready to copy. That lets the Mike Atia controller know, hey, I have a pen and a piece of paper and I am ready to take down all the details. And hopefully you will get a concise Dialogue as this Yankee Victor 3088, Learjet 35, RVSM approved, perfect. That takes care of the type of aircraft and equipment capabilities. Our uh, departed Caracas, landing San Juan, which we already knew. Armour at 2055, there you go, your ears should perk up. That's new information. At flight level 330, also new information. Beacon code 3125. Now, Usually they will stop there and they will not give you a route of flight class or more. They are just inferring that you ha might have an idea of what you're going to clear the aircraft on or that is now your purview to clear them as such, especially since you didn't have the flight plan. They might not even have any information after or more. You never know and uh, very seldom will you able to Will you be able to, excuse me, get that information from the Venezuelan controller? So guess what? You, well, us, or we, excuse me, we have what we have stored in our brain, what we just learned from all those slides, we have an airway in mind, and we will complete that task. So let's give them a read back and make sure everything is correct and we heard everything correctly and thoroughly. Yankee Victor 308, Learjet 35, RBSM approved, departed Caracas, landing San Juan, it's main on more 2055, flight level 330, squawk 3125, after our more, now here is where we are given new information, after our more, November 779, Joshi, Route 12, San Juan, Quick traffic search, we see that we have traffic at 33 and 35, none of which is a factor because when American 1427 is at Raffi, Yankee Victor 308 is just coming on the stage at Armour. Approved. Wonderful. And bam, you just did it. How absolutely fantastic. That is what you relay, and that is what will be relayed to the pilot. And now you have a flight plan that will put into the system, all downline of facilities will get that information and boom, you just completed a wonderful exercise, wonderful scenario that happens rather often in the D2 and D8 environments. So give yourself a pat on the back, you did a darn good job. All right, let's keep the good vibes going and let's cover just a couple more details before we finish things up. Bask in all of your D-side glory because look at the strip you got. Everything is concise. It's marked up properly, and that is the end result. So enjoy the fruits of your labor. Take a look at it. Stare at it. It is something to behold. So great job, and let's go to those details I talked about.
To the bulleted list we go for one last time, here or there, and we're still talking about here, but I think we are approaching the threshold of there. And just a small example, because like I said, we're going to cover the far out there in another video. So second method, reach out for assistance. Let's see how this could have been different. It could have easily went a more tenuous and tedious route, if you will. So ready, set, just go. I'll see you there. You know, like Bill Murray here in the movie Groundhog Day. And the clock hasn't moved a bit. We're still at the nightmare of D2 and D8. What has changed? Well, we're picking right up from where we left off. We ready the blank strip. And we say Yankee Victor, 308, say point of departure and destination, right? This truly is Groundhog Day. Yankee Victor, 308, departed Caracas Landing, Charlie Yankee, Yankee Zulu, otherwise known as Lester B. Pearson, Toronto Airport. And oh my goodness, that is so far. That's a couple thousand miles. I mean, that's thousands of miles away from our airspace, let alone my Katia's airspace. And we have no flight plan information as we write it down and we panic because we have missing flight plans. They happen all the time, like we talked about, because we shared an automation interface with these facilities and we are talking really fast right now. I know I'm talking fast, but guess what? We are not going to panic because guess what? We have an asset. We have a resource available to us that sometimes you need their help. When you don't have time to find a chart supplement or time to log into Sky Vector and find a way to clear an aircraft from or more all the way to Toronto using airways and fixes, proper airways and fixes, making sure the aircraft adheres to at least the route of flight that keeps them out of active military airspace, conforms with um, aircraft performance characteristics, all kinds of things that you do not know. But guess what? Usually there is a simple explanation why you didn't get the flight plan. Now I say simple because it's just a matter of it being presented to you, being resent to you. Now, why it didn't get sent to you in the first place? Now that is a complex answer. It's uh, uh, very deep in layers of abstraction on how a flight plan actually gets to you, but we can actually probably make another video on how that works and the way we interface with the Miami Flight Data Processor, but that's not the purview of this video. So we are going to give Miami Flight Data a call. It's very simple on the ETVS. You can find it there. Their extension is 68. And we're going to tell Mike Atia, we're going to call him back. We're going to dial 68 on the Miami Dow line. It's active now. As you see, it is a green. It's going to pick up on the and the specialist is going to pick up and say Miami flight data. And our response is going to be yet again, keeping it very concise and short. San Juan Center request flight plan Yankee Victor 3088 from Caracas, excuse me, to Toronto. And sometimes there's going to be a short pause. You're going to hear the clicking of keys in the background. And then you will hear the wonderful response. We will put it in. And just like that, a sigh of relief, it means it exists. It is in the Miami flight data processor. It's in the computer, not necessarily our computer. Something happened that it didn't send, but guess what? It exists and that means we do not have to find that chart supplement or have to brainstorm a route from the San Juan FIR all the way through either Miami, uh, New York or through New York flight plan, uh, you know, centers all the way to where they uh, meet up with Canadian airspace. So wonderful. So let's see what that looks like. Next slide. See you there. I am not kidding. It is just a few seconds later from when that specialist says we'll put it in. You type in FR Yankee Victor 3088 because you are trying to do a search for it in the flight data input output or the FDIO. And sure enough, either that prints out or sure enough, just on its own device, because the specialists put the flight plan in, you will get a proper proposal strip. How do you know it's a proposal? Because we see that there's a P time associated with it, filed altitude there, nothing's populated, and just as you always would as a D side, you're gonna call Mike Atia back, get the estimate altitude, possibly the beacon code, and you'll do your traffic search, which we already determined that they are clear and safe at flight level 330 and approve it. Now, how awesome is that? We just took care of two instances. Now, 
This instance probably seemed a lot faster because you called Miami and they gave you the flight plan. But sometimes when you're so busy and you will get to the point where you are that busy and you are seasoned enough to where you know your airspace so well, like the back of your hand, as you should when you are an expert. Like I said, to know thine airspace is to know thyself. Then you are going to be able to respond as soon as you see that there's no flight plan in existence and you understand that the aircraft is landing somewhere in the San Juan FIR, and in this case, Puerto Rico, San Juan, you're going to be able to spout it out like you've never spouted it out before. It's going to be ingrained in your memory, and you'll, that call will take shorter than calling, ending the call of my Katia, calling Miami, having them do a query, Telling, telling you that they're going to send you a flight plan waiting it to come out. You will be able to do it so much faster. So just remember, it pays to understand and to have that encyclopedic knowledge, if you will, of your airspace. And you will get there, studying, experience, all the wonderful things that have brought you to this point. Well, if you never stop learning, you will never stop improving. So that's, uh, take solace in that and be confident about it. Great job with that, guys. I'll see you at the slide, uh, next slide, all right? Oh, fantastic job. Come on in. The water is great. And that's just not a metaphor for what you just accomplished. The water is rather tempid and I think you would find it to your liking. Fantastic job today. Really proud of you guys. What did we do today? What did we accomplish? Well, we took a situation that occurs very, very often in the south and southeast portion of our airspace and we turned it around and just performed absolutely stellar. We took a situation, we did not have the flight plan, and we took a pause and we thought to ourselves, hey, let's work from the inside out. And that's the way we learned. We looked at the video map. We found out the traffic flow that gets into San Juan. We looked at the SOP that enforced those arrival gates, those arrival transition areas. And what did we do? After we found fixes, we continued that inside out approach, made our way outside, took a look at airways and traced them all the way back to the boundaries. Boom, we have just become experts in our airspace, knowing it like the back of our hand, understanding how we are going to route and facilitate traffic according to the SOP, keeping this a cyclical, wonderful juggling act of air traffic control, continuing to move airplanes in a way that keeps them safe, orderly, expeditious service. That's why the book is there. It's designed to help you out, not hinder you, but to help and empower you. And I hope you feel that way now as we took a look at a situation, applied some local directives to it. So absolutely stellar and wonderful job, really sublime. Steve here, really happy you guys decided to click upon this video and spend some time talking shop. Always appreciate the time we have together. I hope this finds you doing extraordinarily well and cannot wait to see you again at our next video. Just remember, wishing you nothing but the best and keep those attitudes just like your separation, positive. I'll see you soon.